Let's practice some tables here in Excel 2013. You can download the file from sdrv.ms forward slash 19s 3 capital K G9. We're going to highlight the cell here, this table. And then we're going to go to insert table. And because we already have headers, we're going to leave this checkbox intact. I'll click OK. You can see that we have a beautiful formatted table here. And of course, if you want some more styles, you can hit the drop down box here within the design tab and choose any beautiful color. Let me press Control Z. If we went to insert table and we didn't have this checkbox selected, you can see that Excel creates some generic headings and treats your months as regular data. I don't want that, so I'm going to press Control Z and go to insert table and then click OK. Point number two, we can actually name this table. With this table selected, I'm going to go to the table name here and I'm going to type in my table. And once you name it my table, you can go to the formulas tab and go to name manager. And you can see that it's actually there. It's named. So what's amazing is that you can actually click on any cell and refer to it using formulas. I could type in equals sum bracket, type in my, and there is my table. I'm going to press tab so I don't have to bother typing the rest. Tab, close bracket, and press enter. So you can literally find the sum of the, all the numbers in your table just like that 38,977 saves you a lot of time let me press delete so point number three traditionally when moving rows and columns you might want to uh, grab the bottom right corner of the table and just ex expand it out so if I were to drag this to the right it would create an additional uh, column control Z or if I were to drag the bottom right corner and drag it down it create two additional rows and by control Z by creating this extra space what you could do is if I were to grab June here and highlight June I could press control X and then go to July and then type in control V you could copy and paste over make some room and, and do some rearranging in that way and of course you can also delete columns if you wanted to delete columns you can highlight it right click and go to delete table columns or even table rows and there you go however if you do have the opportunity to select an entire column or entire row it, it might save you a little bit of time by knowing how to do this so let me just show you something here I'm going to select the entire column B, press Control X. And then if I were to focus on the month of March, so I'm going to right click on column D. And if you're focusing on the entire column or the entire row, you can actually insert cut cells. And let's see what happens. If I insert cut cells, which is I cut column B, January. It's amazing how there's no extra spaces. There's no need to create an extra empty column here. There is a simple swap that happened. When we cut the January, which was on the far left, and we pasted it on top of March, it pasted it to the left of January, and it pushed the contents of February to the left. So now we have February, and then we have January and March. So you can see that it's possible to do some shuffling without having to introduce a temporary column. In the same way, you can do the same thing with rows. So let's finish off this challenge by adding a, a row to the end here. I'm going to grab the bottom right corner here, and I'm going to drag it down. And by doing so, I'm retaining the actual pattern of the table. And who's the next NBA superstar? It's, of course, you. And in the month of February, you'll be making $999. And in January, we'll make up some other values as well. And you can do the rest yourself. Excellent.